In today's video, we are going to talk about Universal Orlando canceling their dining plans and what we think is going to replace it. If you're new here, on this channel we talk about all things theme parks, including updates, news, and tips and tricks for your next theme park vacation. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hey guys, welcome back. As we are sure you've already heard, Universal Orlando has decided to discontinue their current dining plan. If you've already purchased one for an upcoming vacation, have no fear, they will continue to honor those. Right but they are no longer selling them. What we figured we'd do in today's video is talk about some of the issues the old dining plan had, reasons we think that Universal got rid of it, and our favorite, we have some theories of what we think is going to replace it, and we think they are very interesting. On our latest trips to the parks, we have noticed the lines at restaurants <laughs> have been increasing exponentially. Mm -hmm. Everything from the freestyle machines to the outdoor food tents and especially the quick service locations have had incredibly long lines. We hit a point during our last trip where we looked at each other and we were just like, guess what? We'd rather starve and ride Hagrid's. We are done. Uh, we're serious too. We think we that- hungry. <laughs> we think that there are several things to blame for these increasing lines, like yeah. the increasing crowd levels of that course. we've seen lately, as well as some of the regulations that are still on team members. But we also think that some of the issues with the dining plan and the mobile ordering that was also discontinued are to blame for some of these long lines. When looking at the dining plans, they reference things like snacks, drinks, quick service meals, and even full service meals. And it can be really hard when you're in the parks to try to figure out what counts as a snack versus a quick service meal. Quick quiz coming at you, hot shot. You sit down at the Leaky Cauldron, you order a meal, waiter brings it out to you. What is that? What is that? It's a quick service meal. Yeah, it confused us too. <laughs> also, butterbeer. Which one is that? We don't know either. Don't worry about it. Because when we had the dining plan, they counted it as like three different things. So all in one trip. So we have no clue. Plus, it's really hard to know what restaurants even accept the dining yeah. plan cards. And when you have an entire family and each person has their individual card, it just gets more complicated. We've seen people on several occasions get all the way to the front of the line only to find out One hot dog, please. <laughs> that their dining plan isn't accepted at that restaurant or, <laughs> or that they don't even have a quick service credit left. These people are understandably upset and even worse, they're still starving. We call that hangry. Um, Anna's the queen of hangry. It's okay. But seriously, you've stood in line for like an hour with the sun beating down on you, and then you walk up there and you're like, oh, I'll have my twisted tater with the hot dog and some queso on it. And they're like, uh, you can't have that. Guess what? You're gonna be mad. We were mad. <laughs> so we think these are some Angry. of... We think these are some of the reasons that Universal has decided yeah. to forego the dining plans. We fully believe that Universal will come out with a new dining plan. One that works. Yeah, we don't expect them to just forego dining plans forever. Mm, sort of. We have one theory where it's sort of like, forego, we'll get to it. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a few theories about what might replace the current dining plan mm -hmm. system. And the first one is tasting lanyards. So this year at the Mardi Gras festival, they had several food and drink options yeah. that were part of this event. And the event was so extremely successful. Yeah. So we had heard a lot of people raving about it before we got down there. And to be honest, it was one of the best food festival type events that we've ever experienced yeah. at a theme park. And one of the great things about it was it ran extremely smooth. Mm -hmm. This was during spring break when we were down there. So it was very busy. Yeah. And we had no problems at all. And we think a lot of that can be contributed to the fact that you knew what you were getting. You bought a tasting lanyard and you knew you could use it at the trucks located. And you could get anything at those trucks. 
There wasn't this confusion. When you got up right. to the front of the line, there wasn't a, oh, you don't take that here. And you knew mm-hmm. going in, you couldn't walk over to, say, I don't know, Louis and get a piece of pizza with it. Right. You knew what you were getting. And that is one of the things that really made that food festival awesome, aside from the fantastic food. But it was just knowing, like, when you bought the one for, like, the annual pass, you had 15 tastings. I get 15 things that I want, like, from anywhere. And we know that people really enjoyed this food festival and that it was good for Universal yeah. because they actually extended the dates that it was going on <laughs> yeah. twice. Yeah. So they were making lots of money, and any time that there's money to be, to be made, you're going to go ahead and continue doing those things. The way that the lanyards worked is that they're basically a dining plan, yeah. but only for the Mardi Gras food tents. So when you purchase one of these lanyards, it has a certain number of items on it. When you go to one of the food tents to purchase one of the items, instead of paying money, you just scan your lanyard and then you get a receipt that tells you how many items you have left. They also sold a pass holder yep. version of this card that was a much better deal than the one that was available to regular daytime guests. And so like I alluded to earlier, it just made it a lot smoother because you knew you were never getting told no unless you ran out of tastings when right. you got up to the front. If you had credits left on that lanyard, you were getting whatever you wanted to from those trucks and there wasn't any kind of like confusion about what you could and couldn't get, right. where you could and couldn't go. It was all available to you. With the success of the Mardi Gras Food Festival, we fully expect to see more food festivals in the future. We also think that it's entirely possible that Universal has decided to stop selling their dining plan in order to make the future dining plans a tasting lanyard option. Yeah, so our theory on this is they could make um, basically like credit-based lanyards right so you purchase a lanyard that has 30 credits on it and everything in the park is available to you they just cost different amounts of credits right. that would do away with the confusion of what you can get what you can't get mm -hmm. and it would really help simplify everything the only thing is they would have to figure out how to make it cost effective right. for their consumers Real quick, if you're enjoying this video- Or we, even if you're not. We would really appreciate it if you go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Yeah. It helps us on our channel and it helps us reach a wider audience to help everyone plan their universal vacation. Our second theory is probably the most convenient of all the theories. It's also probably the least likely to happen. Yeah. Because it's the one we want to happen the most. <laughs> and that is, we would love to see like an all-inclusive type meal plan. We love convenience. Everyone does. That's why you purchase the dining plan. And it'd be like going on a cruise where you can just get whatever you want when you want to. If you're hungry, go up and grab something. There are some issues with this type of plan, of course. Like how do you limit who, like sh people sharing food. Right when they can get it and what we think you could do is implement something sort of like the freestyle cup so it wouldn't be necessarily whenever you want it but right make it readily available people can only eat so much and if you put it at a certain price point it could be quite feasible with this theory, we think that they could implement a tiered system yeah. where the first tier would be a dining plan that includes unlimited drinks and snacks. Unlimited. The second tier could be a dining plan that includes drinks, snacks, and quick service meals. Yeah. And then the third tier could be one that offers drinks, snacks, quick service, and full service. Yeah, and so then you could really define like in the app or whatever, tell people what is available, where you'd have to get that logistically worked out. Also, you could do a fourth tier. Um, this, pro this, is, this is like 100% <laughs> probably not gonna happen, but unlimited alcohol oh. and just have some rowdy folks running through the parks. Um, that one's not happening, but we think there is a balance to be found here. Right. And we think that this is a system that could work. We just haven't quite worked out all the kinks because there are quite a few but it is a system that we think a lot of people would take advantage of yeah and if they they could still make money 
even with people sitting there gorging themselves. And our third and what we think is our most interesting theory is, as we said earlier, they took away the mobile ordering app. Right. And what we could see happening is them sort of combining the two. Um, the dining plan previously was a way you could save a little bit of money mm -hmm. uh, if you you had to work it the correct way, but you right. could save some money. So what we might see in the future is them turning it more into like a premium or an upgraded service where you pay a little extra for just pure convenience. And what we would think might happen is like the mobile ordering would turn into like if you have the dining plan you can basically mobile order with your credits right and the food will be available at a certain time of course if they do this this will have to be a limited service they can't offer that to everyone right but it would make a lot of sense and for people who don't like waiting in lines for food we think there's a big market there we think people would 100 percent pay to be able to skip the lines if you could just basically push a button that says prepare my food 15 minutes later you go pick it up at a window that is not crowded the way that we think this might work is when you purchase the dining plan either like a week or two weeks before your trip yeah. you get access on the app to start planning your meals yeah. so you would go ahead and pick the restaurants that you want to eat from and each restaurant would have a certain number of time slots that are available then once you get to the parks all you would have to do is tell the restaurant yes i'm ready prepare yeah. my food and go ahead and pick exactly what you want to eat and then you get a notification when your food is ready so with this plan it would both please people who purchase the dining plans because they're planners so people that want to have everything ready beforehand before they ever get to the parks and it would please people that are interested in the mobile ordering because they want to skip those lines yeah so you can kind of kill two birds with one stone the only thing this would do is like we said this would have to be an upgraded service so you would be paying a premium for it right but it would make things run a lot smoother especially mm -hmm. if you had a separate window or something where you were guaranteed to let certain people in that would reduce all the lines it wouldn't just benefit the mobile ordering people it would benefit everyone in the parks yeah. and that's what we're really trying to do we're trying to find something that works for everyone because right now it just it doesn't work. No. Um, and that's why, I mean, it doesn't work at all, really, because it's gone. <laughs> um, but seriously, we think a system of this nature is potentially what we might see. Right. Um, once again, if there's money to be made, they're going to make it. And by offering mobile ordering as more of an upgrade mm -hmm. to being at the parks, almost like an express pass for food, yeah. which we've talked about before, you could make some money and also make people's trips more convenient. Also, we did want to let you guys know that we did create some Pew Crew merch. Yeah. So if that's something you're interested in checking out, we'll put a link down in the description below. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. Leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know if there was an unlimited eating plan where would you go to first? If you enjoyed this video, give us thumbs up. You can hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you can alert every time we post a new video. Nom, nom, nom. Thanks for watching.